Good morning. Uh, yeah, so I am live. I'm here in my studio. So I was saying before, I did a video about these, um, which again, I didn't really expect to be as successful as it was. Um, but these are, perhaps this one, these are the Toman, um, the snake. <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Snake with three S's. Um, that, uh, so these do audio over Cat5. In fact, you can do either audio or um, DMX. So they're an XLR connector over shielded Cat5, and it uses, it has to be shielded um, because it does use the shield as part of the signal. Um, so the way these boxes work is it takes the cores, the copper cores of the Cat5 connector. Um, so a Cat5 or, or any Cat, Cat5, Cat6, Cat7, doesn't matter which one you use. Yeah, so it takes those cores and it so it does like orange, you may not know this, but if you do, you've got in a um, cat connector, you've got orange, green, blue and brown um, with like two, two of each colour. So it takes like the orange for hot and cold, green for hot and cold, blue for hot and cold and brown for hot and cold. And then the shield is the shield of the Cat5. So I did a whole video on these um, and they're great and might be worth going and checking out that other video that I made. But in that video, I said the one thing that I'd really like is for them to do a two in, two out version. At the minute, all you can get is four male, four female, um, and they come with a, either a va variation of a box variation like this, or I don't know if you can see over on the shelf, let me grab it. Ugh. Uh, they do a tails variation, so you've got Cat5 on the box with their XLR tails here. Um, so. You can do male, tails, female box, or vice versa. Um, so those are the combination options that you can get. But um, I said in that video, the one thing that I'd really like is a two in, two out box. And so I've made one. Um, what I did was I took, took these apart, resoldered them, reconnected them, and I made a two in, two out version. And what I've done is I've got this little compilation video here for you so I can just talk you through what I did. So um, as you can see there I took uh, I think it was four pairs, eight boxes in total um, and first thing you're going to do is you're going to unscrew all the screws, take it all apart. Uh, it, it does take a little while to do this, I mean I think it took me um, probably the best part of the day to do all eight of these, probably five or six hours, something like that. So you're going to go through, unscrew all the screws, open up the cases. It's relatively simple. I think there's three screws per box. Uh, sorry, six screws per box, three per side. So you're going to take them apart, um, and then the, the the front plate just lifts out. And of course, you need to do that for both sides of the pair. So there we go, two two pairs undone. Um, so what you now are left with is a bunch of connectors on a circuit board. It's a relatively simple electronics inside of here. But what we're going to do is we're going to unsolder two of the connectors. Um, now you need to make sure that you do the same two on both sides of the, the boxes on the two pairs. So you've got the, the connectors are named, numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 on the fronts. So make sure you do like connectors three and four from both the two boxes, because what you don't want to do is to solder um, male to male and female to female and give yourself like a gender chainder box because that won't help you. You need to make sure you're going male to female on both sides. So you're going to have two male, two female connectors, but you need to make sure your male on box A is on one and two and your female on box B is on one and two, and then vice versa for three and four. Um, so I'll show you that in a minute, but this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm, un I'm unsoldering connectors three and four from both of the two pairs of these boxes. So the last two connectors on each side, unsolder those connectors. And then it's another couple of screws on the front to actually take the connectors themselves out of the plate. All of this is fairly simple. If you're 
any use to using a soldering iron at all. Um, I don't think you'll have a great deal of difficulty with this. It's pretty simple. Um, there's nothing complicated. You're not really doing anything difficult. If you've, if you've soldered an XLR before, then you could manage to do this absolutely no problem. So you're going to whip the two screws out the front and then the, the two sockets themselves will actually just come out of the red face plate there. So take those two screws out. There we go. And there's two connectors out. And then repeat the process on the second box as well. As I say, just making sure you're doing three and four. Or you can do one and two. Entirely up to you. Doesn't matter which pair you take, but just make sure you're taking the same pair on both of the two boxes. Don't do one and two on one and three and four on the other. There we go, all four connectors out. And now it's just a case of swapping them over and putting them back in the opposite way around. So the two that came out of the first box are now going back into the second box and the two came out of the second box are going back into the first box. So we've just swapped them, male for female, from one box to the other. Screw the connectors back into the boxes. Flip them back over again. And now we're gonna re-solder those wires. So the solders, the wires that we desoldered first time round, we're re-soldering. Again, just making sure cable three going to socket three, cable four going to socket four. It's fairly obvious. Again, the cable length to cut to length. So they, they literally, the cables fit to length for each of the sockets, so you can't really get it wrong. It is still very, very simple. Um, just a quick bit of soldering, getting those connectors back in again and back into place. Right, so what we're doing here is I'm just showing you, you've got um, ground hot and cold on the three pins on the original ones a flipped in reverse for ground hot and cold on the new connectors because we've got a male on one side and a female on the other side you need to make sure you've got the right cable to the right pin ground hot and cold and then cable tester checking each connector one at a time making sure that each pin is good ground hot and cold all three pins connecting through properly once you've done that you will end up with something that looks like this. So this was how it started off. Four identical pins, uh, sorry, four identical connectors. So on this case, four female connectors was how it started. And what we've ended up with is two female and two male. So we've just swapped three and four for a male pair and, and vice versa. So what this now gives me, is a two in, two out, over Cat5 audio stage box. Um, and I love them, they're absolutely brilliant. It was the best thing that I did was to swap those two connectors over. What these now mean is I can drop one of these to basically any position on a stage. Um, so if you've got like a, a singer with a guitar, so acoustic guitar and vocal microphone, with an in-ears pack, either mono or stereo, I can drop this in for say like a worship leader, so a worship leader leading from guitar with stereo ears, dropped into position, one cap five, back to a main stage box. Um, and it works absolutely brilliantly and they work pretty much everywhere. So I could do um, stereo keys with stereo ears, I could do, you, you don't need to use all four connectors, so I could do backing singer just on one input with again mono or stereo ears as required. There are a few instances where they don't work, so if you're doing stereo keys with a vocal mic, you need three ins. Um, and then depending on what you've got ears wise, you could do stereo keys with a vocal mic. So you could make a custom box that's three in, one out. So you could have three inputs with a mono ears output if you wanted to. If you did want vocal with stereo keys with stereo ears, you need five connectors. Obviously, you then can't do it on one of these boxes. Four is the maximum that you can do. Um, but they're really great, really good options for being able to drop in fairly quickly and easily um, connectors to a position for band. Um, and that's that's the main thing that I use them for. I will sometimes also use them for sending. Um, uh, so if I need to like plug in a 
a repeat, uh, like a delay speaker. If I've got a, a bigger room that I need to fill where I've got a main PA at the front and then some rear speakers at the back just to carry the sound back, sometimes I'll use one of these to do that so I can just run a Cat5 if I've got to run a long distance on cable. Instead of using 30, 50 metres of XLR, I could just drop one of these in and then drop in a 50 metre Cat5. You can do this really long distances um, so there are videos on YouTube of people who have done these up to a kilometre on a single piece of Cat5 cable. Um, so you can run these really long distances without any problems at all. Uh, so yeah, really, really valuable boxes and swapping those, those two connectors out made a huge difference uh, in terms of how the flexibility of what I can do with them now. And very, very easy to do. As I say, if you've ever used a soldering iron before, if you've ever soldered an XLR before, you will have absolutely no problems in doing this. Like I say, go and uh, go and check them out. Toman, as I say, they're, I think they're something like 35 quid a box, something like that. So not, not mega money at all, um, but really useful, really flexible, great way to be able to send audio to anywhere really um, and and you can run it over significant different distances without any great issues at all go check them out um, and get the soldering iron out swap some pins over because they it's a really quick simple job um, and makes them a much more flexible usable box in the end as well